Hey friends, this is Dave. Welcome back to the channel for another video. Thanks for tuning in as always. Today we're going to be talking about some space stock news updates, partly because it's important to follow the space industry and what your competitors are doing and the, the companies you're investing in, but also just because I love space and it's super fun. <laughs> um, before we get going today, I just wanted to mark a bit of a milestone on the channel. We finally hit 500 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed. I remember when I first started this channel, I had a few uh, Google advertising credits and I just figured, oh yeah, I'll hit a thousand subscribers in a, in a month or so. No big deal. Uh, this is about nine months later and we're at 500, so <laughs> hasn't quite gone uh, as easy as I imagined, but you know, what is? Uh, still having fun and still appreciate every one of you who have subscribed especially some of the guys in the discord it's been a lot of fun uh timmy may or may not have <laughs> almost got himself arrested trying to get us footage of rocket lab's neutron site also colin has been a big help with some of the graphics and images i'm sure you've realized i'm a complete amateur when it comes to that kind of stuff so his help has been a huge uh game changer and it's uh, much appreciated then we have jadam i hope i didn't pronounce your name wrong you're uh you've been a big help to the discord lately and uh, we have several Kiwis in there as well, giving us updates from uh, Rocket Lab's home location. Uh, you guys know who you are, and we definitely appreciate you, as well as a lot of others. There's no way I'm, I can go through everybody, but just a lot of guys have been uh, sharing a lot of valuable information and content. So yeah, really appreciate you all. If you're interested in joining the Discord server, the link is down below. It's completely free and always will be. I also have a link to my Twitter down in the description below. And of course, if you're new here, please do consider hitting like and subscribe. It'll really help out the channel and uh, hopefully we'll push forward to that 1000 subscriber mark, which has been my goal since beginning the channel. Getting We're halfway there now, so pretty excited to see that. All right, so now that that's out of the way, uh, let's dive into the space stock news. <laughs> Starting things off with Rocket Lab, as usual, the stocks had a bit of a pullback lately, mostly driven by the macro markets, but nothing I'm too concerned about. Uh, they recently announced an upcoming mission for Cinespective. That mission will mark the 30th electron launch, the 150th payload sent to orbit, and the 300th Rutherford engine to make it into space, so a lot of exciting milestones for Rocket Lab. I have a feeling that this launch might not be re retrieved uh, or reusable simply because it is a sun synchronous orbit as opposed to a low earth orbit and I just I don't have any facts on this but I have a feeling uh, it's a little bit uh, of a more difficult launch profile and they won't be able to catch the rocket if you have any thoughts on that let me know though they haven't really said either way as far as I'm aware so the launch is called the owl spreads its wings it's set for mid-september and it will actually be on launch pad B in New Zealand. So excited to see that newer launch pad getting some use as well. It's a dedicated mission, so just one satellite to orbit. Next up, I thought this was just a funny little tweet here. So uh, Jim Kramer recently recommended selling Rocket Lab. Uh, and so the person said, guess it's time. This means for Rocket, it'll, Rocket Lab's going to blast off. Uh, hashtag inverse Kramer. If you're not familiar with that, a lot of people... Uh, track Jim Cramer's recommendations and shoot for the opposite because <laughs> it seems to do fairly well. So funny to see. Uh, the stock has done fairly well lately. It had a pullback, but it's bouncing back a little bit now. So that's nice to see. Next up, we have uh, more information about Rocket Lab's mission to Venus. It's a very exciting mission. I think I'm going to make a dedicated video on that, but just for the new details today, uh, this mission is going to be supported by a science team at MIT. It's the first private mission to Venus ever and the first opportunity to probe the Venusian clouds in nearly four decades. So uh, let's dive into some of these new mission details. The, the mission to Venus is a small direct entry probe planned for baseline launch in May 2023 using a low mass, low profile, auto fluorescing nephilometer to search for organic molecules in the cloud particles 
and constrain the particle composition. Uh, very exciting to look for organics. If you haven't heard the news, if you're not following uh, science, space science as closely, there's been some somewhat controversial discoveries of phosphine gas in the upper atmosphere of Venus, which uh, is much more habitable than the lower down levels of Venus. And um, there's a lot of debate on this, but some people think one of the potential causes could actually be uh, microscopic life floating a lot around up there. We definitely don't know for sure, but it's an extremely interesting mission to go there and try to find out. So um, search for habitable conditions and signs of life in Venus's cloud layer is the primary mission. Uh, this will also provide more maturity to the interplanetary photon spacecraft, really prove out its capabilities. We've already seen it go to the moon successfully, and now Munich now Venus is even a next level up. This will demonstrate high performance, low cost, fast turnaround, deep space entry mission delivering delivering high class science with a small spacecraft and small launch vehicle. This will also take the first step in a campaign of small missions to better understand Venus. Next up we have Astrostock. If you've been following it all lately, it's been a little bit of a disaster for the company. Uh, sad to see they've now dropped below $1 per share, which is actually a pretty key metric in terms of being able to stay listed on the stock exchange. Uh, so the rule around delisting is actually that if a company trades for 30 consecutive business days below the $1 minimum closing bid price requirement, the NASDAQ will send a deficiency notice to the company advising that it has been afforded a compliance period of 180 calendar days to regain compliance with these requirements. So basically, uh, the, if they've been trading below $1 for 30 consecutive business days, they will then have 180 calendar days, not business days, to get the stock price above that $1 minimum. And obviously, further dilution would not help in that cause of keeping the stock price high. So that's a difficult tightrope to walk because at the same time, they do need capital in order to fund their development of their Rocket 4.0. Definitely a different, difficult situation for Astra. I'll keep an eye on it. Right now, they've only been down below for a day or two, so it's not like they're in uh, immediate danger of being delisted, but it could happen in the future, and that would be very bad news for investors. Uh, now on to relativity. We had a full 20-second stage test complete of their uh, the engines for their new rocket. Uh, they are reviewing data, and if all looks good, they'll be on to flight duration test before launch. They're the first company ever to do this on a launch mount at Cape Canaveral and, and are on track to be the first oxygen methane rocket launched to orbit. Firefly, another newcomer in the space, just announced that they're teaming up with a uh, veteran Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman's new rocket will now use Firefly's propulsion technology. So Firefly's propulsion technology utilizes the same propellants as currently in the Antares rocket, which will minimize the required launch site upgrades. Northrop's Antares rocket currently uses Russian engines, which for obvious reasons, given the political climate right now, is no longer acceptable. So they have signed this deal with Firefly to utilize seven of Firefly's Miranda engines and will leverage its composite technology for the first stage structures and tanks. While Northrop Grumman provides its proven avionics and software, upper stage structures, and caster 30XL motor, as well as proven vehicle integration and launch pad operations. This new stage will also significantly increase Antares' mass to orbit capability. So almost like a brand new rocket, really. Uh, it's great to see Firefly getting so many high-profile contracts with uh, proven companies. We also have some more information on Firefly's next launch. As we all know, their first launch was unsuccessful and resulted in a explosion not long after takeoff. So after completing a wet dress rehearsal, a launch attempt 2 of Firefly Alpha is now scheduled for September 11th. Firefly has also announced live coverage with Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, who's one of my favorite YouTubers covering live launches and uh, just in general puts out a lot of interesting space content. And now on to Redwire. 
So Redwire has announced they're to develop their first commercial space greenhouse. The company announced today that it will be developing the only commercially owned and operated spaceflight qualified plant growth platform capable of growing plants from seed to maturity in space. Redwire Greenhouse, scheduled to launch to space no earlier than spring of 2023, will be the first ever commercially owned greenhouse installed on the International Space Station. Commercial agricultural technology co company Dewey Scientific is expected to be Redwire's customer for the inaugural flight. Redwire Greenhouse will deliver valuable insights for crop scientists on Earth and significantly expand humanity's ability to grow full crops in space, something that will be sorely needed if we're ever going to set up colonies on the moon and Mars. Just a few notes, uh, SLS will be launching very soon, so I'm sure we're all going to be watching that closely. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this rocket. It's been massively expensive. It's kind of using antiquated technology. Uh, it's been delayed so many times. Cost overruns are, have been huge. But, I mean, now that it's ready, obviously you hope for the success of the launch. They will be sending an Orion spacecraft around the moon, paving the way for the first astronauts to return to the moon in 50 years. Be very exciting to see that. I know uh, the Apollo missions were before my time, so seeing someone land on the moon live would be extremely exciting to me. So good luck to Artemis and NASA on that mission. Finally, we do have an announcement tonight from SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX and T-Mobile will be announcing plans to increase connectivity. Presum presumably, this will involve SpaceX's new Starlink constellation, so it could be a very important contract for them and new revenue continuing to fund their Starship program. So some last minute details about the SpaceX T-Mobile deal that has just been announced. It sounds like uh, T-Mobile will, starting next year, offer internet and cellular services through SpaceX's Starlink satellites. The Starlink satellites will now be able to broadcast on T-Mobile's wireless spectrum starting next year, allowing your T-Mobile phone to potentially connect to the internet and sell services anywhere getting rid of all sorts of dead zones across the United States and beyond. So exciting news for SpaceX and T-Mobile. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe down below to support the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.